This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first two guests today are both here from St. Paul Lutheran Church here in Alpena and we're here to talk about the Interfaith Amigos. I have Jan Bubaltz and Leslie Kirchhoff. Good morning ladies and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks, Thanks for Nancy. having us Nancy. Thanks for being here and I've been reading stuff in our church bulletin <laughs> and in our church newsletter. I've been seeing some wonderful posters out if you want to hold that up for a moment yes. while we start to talk. And this is a wonderful event that we are so blessed to be able to have in our community. You probably didn't hold that up long oh. enough Leslie. You're okay. a little impatient there. <laughs> and, uh, but Jan, this is really an uh, important part of the 30 Days of Peace. It is. It's one of the, the key uh, events for the 30 Days of Peace, and we're very proud to have uh, initiated this event. We've tied in with uh, other events with the 30 Days of Peace previously. Uh, Best of the Promise was one, and the Wisdom Women. And uh, we just want this to be a very peaceful and enlightening event because interfaith dialogue is so important, especially in this day and age. Well, Leslie, how did they end up coming to Alpena? Because like I said, this is a pretty important group of men. It is an important group of men. And really, the idea started about five years ago. We are part of a religion study group at St. Paul Lutheran Church. And um, our mission was to learn about other faiths in order to uh, build a more peaceful future. Understanding leads to peace. So uh, we began studying uh, Islam, we studied Judaism and Christianity, and then we went into other faiths as well. But in the course of all of this, we ran across, we're always looking for um, speakers and uh, topics that we can bring, and we ran across the Interfaith Amigos and a um, TED Talk and a YouTube clip. Uh, five years ago we said, oh no, it's just not possible, it would be too hard to get them here, too much money. And then as we developed our partnership with the 30 Days of Peace, mm -hmm. which Jan has mentioned, um, we started thinking maybe this would be possible. So um, with great partners, we, we uh, wrote many grants and we have sponsorship coming from other organizations and churches. We were able to raise the money to bring Amazing. them here. So the whole thing <laughs> will be free. Okay, so who are the Interfaith Amigos? The Interfaith Amigos are composed of an Imam from the Muslim or Islamic faith and a Jewish rabbi and a Christian pastor from the United Church of Christ. Uh, they began in right after sub September 11th and uh, saw the need for interfaith dialogue as it being very important and learning more about our differences and what unites us. So they looked at the core teachings of each religion and each faith and talk about that and just give us ways to have interfaith dialogue to promote peace, as Leslie said. And you know, Leslie, I know why I would want to come to this event, um, you know, reading the newspaper, watching television, mm -hmm. hearing about all the things that are going on in our world. You know, it's so important that, that you have a religion, that you, you know, you have something you believe in and something that gives you hope for a future. But why would other people want to come to this event? Well, I, Jan mentioned it's a timely topic. It, it's always in the news. And um, we think that um, we can all benefit from learning about other faiths. And through that learning, uh, finding out how we're all connected. There is a connection yes. between all of mm -hmm. us. Absolutely. And um, at the same time, the Interfaith Amigos do a good job of talking about the problematic parts of each faith. Misconceptions. Yes. So mm -hmm. um, they do it with a somewhat of a humorous style. It, they're entertaining, but their message is so important. And this isn't their first day either. They've been doing this for quite some time and have a, a wonderful repertoire and messages that they deliver. And they've been doing it all over the world, so um, their audience is vast. Um, they also talk about um, the ways our religions are similar, our faiths are similar. Uh, in Judaism, they talk about oneness. In the Islamic faith, they talk about compassion. And in the Christian faith, our key is unconditional love. So. Basically, we're looking at how we're all united and the things that divide us are things that we need to learn and have a dialogue about in a peaceful way. Okay, before we get too many more questions here, mm -hmm. when is the event and when can we come to see it? 
Well, it's September 22nd. Okay. And um, there will be two smaller group workshops held at Granham Theater at the college. Okay. And the first one is at 11, and the second one is at 2. And you can uh, register for both of them okay. or just one or the other. Um, we just do ask that you register for those. There's no fee, but we um, need a registration. And you can register at ifaalpina okay. at gmail.com or the phone number is 989-657-9474. And those posters are up and about so people yes, can find them will. or you could call St. Paul Lutheran Church or any of the other churches right. in the community Absolutely. would have that information. Yeah. And then that evening there will be a, perform or a presentation by the Interfaith Amigos okay. at uh, Stanley Beck Auditorium at okay. the high school at 7 o'clock and after they um, speak that we will have um, book signing. They will have some of their books for sale if you'd like to purchase one and uh, they'll sign uh, the books and have uh, light refreshments after. Now is there cost for any of these events? Totally free. Wow. Thanks have, to all the sponsors. Yep. And also I want to mention there is a, a social media page, Alpina, okay. uh, Interfaith Amigos Alpina. So if you'd like that page, it also has current information about okay. the event. And we have about enough time for you to read who some of our sponsors are that are making oh, this wonderful we event. We have uh, a wonderful list of sponsors. We have um, the First Congregational Church, uh, the Alpena Comstock Grant, the um, uh, Peace and Justice Grant from the Congregational Church, the St. Paul Lutheran uh, Church Alpena Trust and Endowment Fund, uh, the Alpena Lark Association, which is the Lutheran, Anglican, Roman Catholic Congregational Consortium, the Presbytery of Mackinac Peacekeeping uh, Grant, the uh, Northwest Lower Michigan Synod of the ELCA Trap Endowment Fund Grant, Community Foundations of Northeast Michigan, mm -hmm. um, the uh, Art in the Loft, which is the regranting agency, supported us, the Michigan Global Awareness Consortium uh, Fund from the ACC Foundation, and uh, the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural wow. Affairs, it, it just, and the Episcopal Diocese of Eastern Michigan grant. Wow. So um, we have a lot of um, wonderful sponsors. And so this. grateful for their support. Yes, very yes. much. So all these wonderful agencies mm -hmm. and churches and, and community organizations came together to present this because they yes. know the importance of it. Right. Exactly. And uh, do you know what the topics of their workshops will be? I do. Um, the first workshop is, uh, is at 11. It's Creating Trust in an Interfaith Environment. And the second one at 2 is the value of a core teaching. And then the evening, uh, their title of the performance is The Challenges to Interfaith Cooperation. Okay, we're out of time. So September 22nd, three chances to see the Interfaith Amigos. Thanks, Don't exactly. miss it. You'll be sorry if you right. do. Thank, Thank you, you both so much for being here. Thanks for having us. I'll be right back with some information from Hope Shores Alliance following these messages. Hi, welcome back. My last guest today, as promised, is from Hope Shores Alliance. I have Janine Coates. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to have you here today, and it still kind of rolls off my tongue a little slower, Hope Shores Alliance, because you did have a name change earlier this year, you and did. it's more a name that reflects what, what you actually do do. Correct. Um, back uh, this April, we switched from Shelter Incorporated to Hope Shores Alliance. Um, and, and as you mentioned, the reason we did that was to try to encompass the huge range of services that we provide. Um, I'm sure you can relate being in the community. You attach um, establishments and people right, with exactly. one thing. And um, unfortunately, Shelter Incorporated became known as the Shelter for Women and Children. Okay. Um, we're working with men, we're working with children, we're working with elderly, um, and it's not just domestic violence. It's sexual assault, stalking, domestic violence um, across the spectrum of a life. So hopefully the name will better reflect and hopefully we'll both get better at remembering it. Yes, <laughs> so your array of services. Uh, well, it's, it's broad. Um, we do still have a safe house, but we do cover five counties, and there's only a safe house in one. Okay. So um, when folks call the 800 number, um, they could be looking for emergency temporary services, um, possibly in the safe house, possibly in a hotel. Um, they could just be calling for supportive listening. But we have outreach and service advocates who are mobile, so we can go to hospitals for, um, if the hospital is reported there's been a sexual assault, an advocate can go right there. Perfect. Um, we have our um, legal advocacy services where we can um, assist uh, the victim's advocate in the prosecutor's office. 
we have housing services um, and our housing department actually has some transitional housing units as well as a housing advocate that utilizes a voucher program so one doesn't even need to be inside of the safe house their entire life and they could still have an entire team that um, are providing all of these services and at the core really just providing support belief and empowerment based services and you know Janine as I was on the shelter board for many years and being involved in the community and a staunch supporter of everything that you do there you know I realize that a lot of people think we don't have sexual assault in their mm -hmm. community that we don't have um, you know domestic violence well we know that that's not true and so we need to make people more aware what is um, sexual assault what is domestic violence and I know that all of your advocates are there to help people understand that this isn't something that's right or should be allowed to happen absolutely I think um, as we were saying before how it's just natural for our brains to kind of compartmentalize things um, domestic violence that's interesting if you're speaking to law enforcement or a prosecutor their definition of domestic Domestic violence is different than mine. Um, domestic violence to them is there's a violence has occurred and the two parties know each other, are related, neighbor, you know, there's a relationship. Um, that's not what we do at Hope Shores Alliance. We're working with people who are in a relationship in which their um, partner used power and control, um, whether through financial means. Mentally, um, emotionally, and physically. Absolutely. Coercion. Um, it, it can look different um, based on the abuser, really. Um, but at its core, it's, it's people who are defining themselves as um, victims of somebody who possibly they still love, but was using those coercion and, and possibly violent tactics. Um, so that itself can look different. And sexual assault, I think we have, um, we have a lot of bias out there. Um, as it gets said in the media, I think it's, um, I hear from a lot of people that it's very well known how difficult it is to be a survivor of sexual assault in a criminal trial. And, and I think a lot of that comes just from the media. Um, they certainly haven't gotten it from a victim's advocate or the prosecutor's office. So um, we do have definitions that I think are really more rooted in what we saw on TV versus what's happening in our communities. Um, and that brings up a good point. What we see on TV, there's been a lot in the past few years and recent, a lot of sexual assault, domestic violence cases that are handled in the media. Mm -hmm. um, we hear about, well, it kind of slid under the carpet, this big, um, you know, basketball star beat his girlfriend up, but, you know, she dropped the charges, it's been slid under mm -hmm. the carpet, and this was allowed to go on in a, with a football player, even though everybody knew about it because yeah. they didn't want, they wanted him to play football. So how do you, how do you work with that at Hope Shores Alliance with people who sometimes it's, it's accepted like it's kind of okay well I, I think what what's important to know is um, there are trials in court and there are the the trials um, that we have socially um, and it's very hard when we have hero stars people that we think are going to go far to see them as something other than that um, it's been my experience outside of um, being well versed in domestic violence sexual assault and stalking being educated on that it's been my experience that people are really one thing there's very few people who are um, just evil and there are very few people who are just wholly good um, we all have bad days sure. <laughs> <We> all, <laughs> every choice is an opportunity to do good or bad um, and, and we can make either one sometimes we do um, a lot of times I think people see a famous person a celebrity an athlete and they see them as a one note they are this good thing they couldn't have done this bad thing um, a lot of times the media doesn't help when they do things such as in the Brock Turner case where he was the star athlete he was the student and she was the passed out victim as she said in her victims impact statement um, she wasn't given a voice she wasn't given um, a picture of her looking at her best. He was. So oftentimes we're at that mercy. Um, but it is important for us to acknowledge that violence, stalking, it can happen to any of us. Um, abusers are where we should be focusing on. They're the ones who are committing these acts. And if we can make them feel that they're not in a safe place to do that, we can make our community safer. So um, last Sexual Assault Awareness Month, this last April, um, it was the theme was prevention is possible 
And at first that made me very nervous because I went, oh my gosh, we're going backwards and we're saying, ladies, have your mace ready, don't go mm -hmm. jogging in the evening. Um, but really what they were saying is, does your work have a policy on sexual assault? Is it known in your schools that if you say you're a victim, you will be supported and believed? And although it will be investigated, um, at its core, you're not going to be um, the one who's persecuted. If we have that as a foundation in our communities, it's going to make abusers feel very uncomfortable. They're going to know that our communities do not allow for these violent acts. And um, that's something we can all do, just support, believe, honor um, survivor stories, provide them with supportive listening, and um, reach out yourself. And ways they can reach out is you need always need volunteers. You have a wonderful group of people that will come and talk to service clubs, service clubs, church organizations, and groups. Always need monetary donations. Um, always doing fundraisers so they can call three five six six two six five and get some more information about how everyone can help. Absolutely. So proud to have all of you working so hard in all of our five communities. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please stay tuned for Dr. Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings everyone and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster. I'm president of Alpena Community College and I'm pleased to have as our guest this morning Tim Kuhnlein, political science and history instructor at ACC. Welcome Tim. Good to be here. Thank you. Good to have you. Tim, recently you delivered a, uh, a lecture at a prestigious university in Berlin. Um, tell the viewers how that came to be and, and what, your, what the lecture was about. Okay, great. Um, well, I worked with a colleague from graduate school, who, um, Dr. Thomas Graven, who was actually here in Alpena in October for the 25th anniversary of German reunification. He gave a lecture at our college, and we arranged for him to do the circuit of Northern Michigan Colleges as part of the Mission Global Awareness Consortium. And so, um, you know, continuing with that relationship, he asked me to come to Berlin uh, this July and give a, a lecture for one of his graduate courses. Um, it was uh, uh, held July 15th at the uh, Free University of Berlin, the John F. Kennedy Institute uh, of American Studies, which is a smaller college within the university. So it was fun. It was July f uh, 15th. It was a really moving experience um, and we had some really nice discussion. I recall when uh, when your colleague was here last fall, you guys gave a gave a, a packed house uh, lecture on uh, East German and reunification at, here at ACC. That's right. He talked about the rise of neo-fascism uh, in Europe and particularly in Germany, um, and uh, how that's playing out. You know, with um, all the events in in Europe in particular, as we you know think about the fact that we're 25 years removed from the reunification process, but also the collapse of communism and the merging of two worlds. Very fascinating time. But as a history instructor, being at the site where the wall separated the East and West had to be um, fascinating. It was moving. You. I had never been to Berlin. Um, I had studied Central and East European politics uh, throughout the, the late 80s and into the 90s and through the 90s before I came to Alpina. And um, it, it was really moving. I, I stayed at Potsdamer Platz, which was the center of um, the Berlin during the imperial times. But then uh, throughout the war, of course, uh, it was severely damaged and, and then divided. And Potsdamer Platz became no man's land. Uh, it was really kind of neat. My hotel was right on Potsdamer Platz with the lobby of the hotel in West Berlin and my room in East Berlin. Wow, that's uh, amazing. Yeah, and if, when you walked out the door, there was a, there were historic remnants of the wall right there, so you could feel that, that uh, uh, the energy, really, the energy of history mm -hmm. and the contemporary evolutions. Uh, Berlin is an amazing city. It's, it's changing rapidly. It's very young, very vibrant, very artistic. Um, very entrepreneurial, and it's amazing what, how quickly they're moving that city forward in, in the, not just the reunification, but the merging of communist and capitalist uh, histories. Do you see uh, or do, can you feel a lot of difference between what used to be the East and, and, uh, and the West? Certainly the architecture is very different, but um, not as much as you would have historically because, of course, the pollution has cleared up. The East Block was horrible with pollution. It was very gray. Anyone who had traveled there could note this. 
And it's hard for people who haven't traveled there to really imagine how depressing it really was. Um, and you can see remnants of that, but um, there's, well, it's been 20 years now, at least, and, and there's so much money being infused, in, particularly in that city from the western part of Germany, that you can see these two worlds um, coming to, to even keel. Um, but yeah, the, the remnants are there. You can feel the imperial past, and you can certainly feel the, fa the fascist presence that was there, um, and certainly the divide between communist and, and capitalist um, lifestyles. Yes. Well, the community was fortunate last night, that would have been Tuesday night this week, um, to uh, have an opportunity to hear you deliver that same lecture at ACC. And yeah. Yeah, and it was, it was a wonderful event. Uh, tell me your you. feelings about it. Um, I was uh, a little reticent about doing it. I wanted to do it before I left because I kind of wanted to get a test <laughs> of the waters before I presented to the German audience. <laughs> um, but um, I, I ran out of time, and um, so I promised a few people I would do it as follow-up. And um, it went well. Um, I think the responses from both audiences were about similar. Um, it was a deep, deep um, sort of topic. Uh, the, the course that I was addressing is titled uh, America as a Metaphor for War. Um, for war. And um, the title of my lecture in the context of that course, which was the last class period, was uh, Where Are We Going? Amer um, America at the Crossroads of Civilization. So it, it was really deep. This course looked at um, America's war on terror, our constant um, struggle with conflict, um, whether it's the war on drugs, uh, class war, um, the, the so-called war on women, um, and uh, the, dr the um, race wars, the culture wars, and you know, other people understand our history and they understand the, that we've had some pretty long struggles. And sorting this out and understanding where the United States is in this larger historical context was really what this was all about. I was there. I was fortunate to be able to attend and hear your lecture, and I thought it was very substantive, very um, um, insightful, Thank and you. very well received. At the end, um, you instructed us that the German audience don't applaud when they, when they uh, want to express their appreciation. They knock their knuckles on the table. That's right. They do this. <laughs> <laughs> so you had, what, 20 or 30 people the last night uh, knocking their knuckles yeah, on the table in right. appreciation. So yeah. we have about a minute left. You do, you've do you done um, community lectures of this sort before, and often I wonder how, well, um, two things. Um, what motivates you, and how do you, how do you, uh, how do you um, attribute success, or what's success to you when you've done these? Um, well, I, what motivates me is uh, using these opportunities as an extension of the classroom. And ideally, you get the young students involved, but it's also about community and getting our community involved, connecting them with the college and what we do at the college. And, and I think the ultimate outcome is to conjure conversation um, about a variety of subjects and bring personal experiences uh, into those discussions so that we can all kind of grow and, and have a deeper understanding. Very well done. We appreciate it. You're establishing, in my view, a tremendous legacy as an instructor at ACC. We're very grateful. Thank, Thank you, you for watching Talk of the Town. We'll see you again next week. This has been Talk of the Town with your hosts, Nancy Smitham and Don McMaster. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at wbkb11.com and click on the community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production. The Talk of the Town furniture and set design are provided by Young Appliance Art Van Furniture on US 23 South in Alpena.